Corona time. Hey, it's Corona time right now. been waiting for wanting commenting DMing a bow build video on a VXR we have an all new 31 and a half VXR today we are going to do a complete bow build shoot some arrows out of it and uh, kind of how I do it how I set this up and uh, looking forward to it my 28 shoots really good and I've only heard really good things about this 31 and a half so I'm really excited to get set up to get shooting on it First thing we're gonna do is just mount everything onto the bow. I have a ham ski rest. Which I'm gonna put it on. This is the, um, the Trinity. So they have like, the, the upgrade on it this year is that they have this like support beam going all the way out and there's a dual track system instead of just like a one on the one side. So it's like more rigid, better support. Custom be real. Yeah, they like anyone can do it. You can do a laser engraving, which is kind of nice. But um, when you thread that bolt in, it's a little bit of paint on the inside, so it's a little bit hard at first. I'm actually going to smash it all the way up against there. It's touching a little bit. Make sure it's level, eyeball it. Doesn't need to be perfect, but you can get it pretty dang near perfect eyeball on it. Cinch it down. One thing it is touching the right there a little bit, but that's not that big of a deal. And you can adjust. Just take it off. No, you can just, no, I'm gonna take it off. I'm take it off. Huh. Cause it keeps it in there. Oh, you know what? That'll move though when I move this to the left because this is going to have to be moved to the left. Yeah, that'll let me do that right now. Because uh, Matthew's riser is actually pretty thick. So I've noticed that everything is a little bit more to the left than it used to, which is fine. All right, yeah, now it's not, eh, it's barely touching. It's fine though. Oh yeah, it's fine. Okay, now what I was doing on my 28 is down here, I actually loosened these two up, put the cord underneath it for the drop away. So I'll do that once I get, once I get my peep sight and everything in, we'll do that. Okay, first what we're gonna wanna do we're gonna put it in the press. Then we are going to get it level. And last chance presses are really good for doing this. You could do it with like a bow vise, um, but it's kind of nice that you can do everything right in the press without like bow vise to press. You can just keep it in the press the whole time. So that's set up. Then we need an arrow. What? Oh, dude, those, so great. those veins, a little bent up right now. All right, so it needs to go way down. And just starting point, you always start completely level through the burger hole. 
it's always like your starting point really that's where you should stay but you just level the string level the arrow and basically just line it all up so it's right through the burger hole this so I can't tell. How's that look? Looks good. Yeah, that looks good right there. So everything's lined up. Now what we're gonna do is take some serving material. We're gonna tie in our under knot real quick. Tie in your under knot. I do under knot. Some people don't. Some people do both. Some people just do a D loop. I do under knot. So we're gonna go back to where it's level. Cinch that down, check. Is that good right there? You can't see, is it good? All right, and all I do for my under knot is they're just like simple, simple, I think they're technically called half hitches or whatever, but you just stack them on each other. You just go back and forth. I do, I think, three, three rows, four rows. Wouldn't do much more than that, and I do more than two. So that's what, three, three. I'll do one more on this side, the one on the back side. And then you do, a normal one on the last one, and then you do a square knot. So you just do like the opposite way that you normally do. Cinches down, make sure it's nice and tight. Ow, too tight. Then you just cut them off. My razor blade is very dull. No, these scissors are good. scissors and then all you do is take your lighter burn down nice and easy there you go so now we have our under knot in just like that we can set up our drop away now we wanted the rest up before you can you can put the rope in um, prior to that and then just like undo this thing like I did if you watch Cooper's bow build video I did the rope first and then I had to take this off. So either way, this way is a little less pain in the butt. So let's go ahead and spin this. So I think I'm actually going to um, loosen these, these screws right here. Yeah, these. So there's these two little screws I did it on my target bow. Nothing blew up when I did it, so it should be all right. That was tight. So yeah, that plate comes right up. Definitely gonna have to loosen more than that. Okay, so all you do, take this piece. Ah, it's a burn mark on that, I'm gonna cut that. a really old piece of dealer material. Let's so take this. Put it underneath. And then really, just pull it tight and then you tighten these screws back down. I guess it's kind of tricky with all these strings. <laughs> Double check, make sure it didn't get loose. I actually did a little bit. 
So it did get a little loose, so I wonder if I can just pull. No, it'll loosen, loosen the back up. Always wanna double check things when you're doing this. There we go. So I'm just snugging it back up a little bit. Now this isn't like a standard way to do it, but I kind of like how you can just jam it in here and I didn't notice anything wrong when I did this on my 38. Or my 36. 36 I did it on and it shoots fine. Let's tighten those back up. Is this two pieces of material that you knocked no. together? So I actually, if I can get this off. So I had a little nick in here, a little nick in it. So I just tied a knot on it. Rather than like getting a new piece, I just tied a knot on, or a knot on it. You can see it, I tried to burn it. Cause it was like flaring up. I cut it on something, I don't know what I cut it on. I'm innovative. Dude, yeah. All right, so now we're gonna tie these dudes. You probably don't need to tie this. You could probably just like cut it and cut it or burn it or whatever, but I always like to tie it just to have the extra, extra material on there in case something breaks. You need more, you need to change something. See, it's better just to have a little extra. So just tie like a normal knot all the way down here until you can't, until you can't no more. Actually, I'm going to take pliers, tighten this up. Cut it. Cut it and burn it. Seems like a very popular common theme here. Looks nice. Actually, I can keep it here. And now we're gonna tie in the D loop. And my D loop material, arrow. You always wanna use the arrow that you're gonna be shooting with because different knocks, different thicknesses, slightly. So you always wanna snap in your knot. And then I never pre-burn. I always like get it all set up. Just kind of struggle bust through all the way to the end. All right, so fluff it up. Just brought out a pro tip, try not to burn it. Just melt it. Already failed. This material, I don't know what material it is, but it's like the outer coating burns a lot faster than those inner strands. And it, um, like, wow, can you zoom in on that close? Like, I forget what material this is, but it like mushrooms. See how like, that's weird. It looks like cauliflower rather than like a smooth, a smooth deal. See how it like does that? Can you see that? That's weird. Anyways, we'll make that ball prettier at the end, but. I always like to get that tight. So I'm just kind of eyeballing the length I want. I kind of like a little bit longer D-loop lately than usual. So then I'm just, so I kind of make the D-loop, then I'll just mark where I want it cut, and then I'll push it all back. Then I'll cut it, and you gotta make sure you take into account like the burn length. Cut it, put this back. Where my lighter went. Fluff it up. Looks good. And it's important 
that you don't pinch your knock. You don't want this thing so tight that your knock can't move. You want a little bit of slop in it. See how there's like a little bit in there? It's about what you want. So I'm gonna take pliers. Yeah, I don't know why. I have a, a big D loop on my target bow right now. That's really big. That's really big. That's really big. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> A little bit, I, yeah, dude. I don't big. know. I had I had a big one on my 38. I don't know if it's just like my anchor. I like it felt really good, farther back. Whatever. So. Whatever. Be whatever. I do stuff weird. So you want to pinch together all this stuff. Make sure you don't like jack up your string or anything. But pinch those together. Looks good. Make these little balls little neater just heat up the surface a little bit smash it down same thing over here heat it up a little bit smash it down you don't need to do this but it looks prettier or you can do that at the beginning either or there we go a little bit of slop in the knot now I'm gonna measure, measure about my peep height distance. So precise, about right there. Get my, this is the uh, Hamsky Raptor peep. I actually really like this peep. Some of the similar technologies that's in their target peep. But it's just the hunting peep. Now the D-loop spun. I should have put the D-loop in before, or should have put the peep sight in before the D-loop. I messed up on that. It's not that big of a deal, but when you put the peep sight in, it separates it, makes the string a little tighter, and uh, just spins some stuff up. So let's go ahead and take a little piece of serving material. You never, ever, 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 ever want to shoot your bow without your peep sight tied in just a little bit. So. You always at least want to tie in, tie in just around your peep sight. For this, it's it's pretty simple. It's just standard knot on top, standard knot on the bottom. Then you do a square knot to finish it off. On you could go more crazy. People are now going crazy about how to do things but I have never really had an issue with the peep sight moving like this. If you do an upper and a lower knot and one in the middle, like unless you do something stupid, it should be fine. So let's go ahead and take this. You can cut it or you can just burn it. Burn them like that. And then you burn these down. D-loop tied in, peep side in. So now we're gonna check the poundage. I don't know if I want this one all the way 70. This is, kind of just like a, this is like a, a good shooting bow. So I'm gonna probably set this up for 70. <sighs> 79, she's hot. Let's try that again. And they say Matthews doesn't make an 80 pound bow. Seventy nine point three, yeah. See, that's good for like hunting and stuff. But do you really need that giant loop? Yes. <laughs> so let's take let's take. Uh, I want to put this out like seventy two. I mean, there's like no reason for me to break my shoulder. And that, like, seriously, you can get like eighty some pounds out of Matthews. A lot of guys are like, well, now you can't shoot 80 pounds. Well, you can still shoot 80 pounds. You can just like put a couple twists in the in the cables and they all come, all the ones I've had come for factory come like a little hot. So, um, which isn't a bad thing. Jeez, it's warm. Seriously, 
to it one turn does to it. Probably. Much easier. 69. One turn was nine pounds. Holy cow. Oh no, 73 pounds. Something was off on that first one. 72.6. 72 72.7. 72 huh. it's, it's just like almost being a three quarter of a pound variance, but it's just the scale. I'm gonna take a little bit more out. Really? Yeah, I'm gonna take a quarter out. I don't know, I don't wanna, you know, do more. All right, quarter, so that's a turn and a quarter out. Let's go ahead and shoot it. Let's shoot it, see how the peep sight is. You know, I sure asked if you watched uh, Cooper's Bow Build, we just got done with Cooper's Bow Build video, so I keep referring to it, but um, if you just watch that, you saw how important it is, like, you shoot your bow a lot before you, like, do a lot of final stuff, just because stuff, you know, fits in, stretch, you know, limb pockets, um, cable strings, it all just, like, settles in those first, like, 100 shots. Arrow. Right there. Dude, this is a good-looking bow. I love the green. Yeah, the green is awesome. Oh, yeah. Okay, peep sight was way off. High low. Way high. Almost enough yeah. where it spins around again. Because <laughs> it's a different axle axle than the 28. It's good. It's not the first time I've shot one of these. It's just the first time I've had one set up. But that feels really good. I think it's a little short. I know it's a little short. I think I have different mods, so let me check if I have, I'm gonna check if I have different mods, and then we're gonna throw them in. Is this it? Super easy. Okay, so we have, I'm pretty sure these are the longer mods. I don't wanna open up the chart, but I'm pretty sure these are the longer one, 85%. I also have 80%, so that would be a great video for a later time, comparing 85 and 80%. If you guys want that, let me know. Oh, I can't do this because it blocks. I was thinking I could put it in the bow press, but I can't. One thing I love about the bow press though is you can do that. Okay. It's amazing how messy things get when you're putting together a bow. Okay, so all you have to do, wrong size. Wrong size? Jeez, that's a small Allen wrench. All you have to do, oh. make sure you don't lose those. This slips right out. There's the mod. If you don't know what a mod is, a mod is what allows you to have X or the proper draw length and with Matthews, the proper draw weight because they have switch weight technology. So these are both 75 pound mods. Let's see. So as you can see, 
boom, boom. And this is uh, 75 pound G and F, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So uh, F, G, a higher letter. Should make it longer, right? Or shorter. I don't know either. Neither do I. I don't know why. This is like all bow companies. They never put like, this makes it 25 and a half inches. <laughs> like, I don't know why they don't write 25 and a half inches or 29 inches. Must be like just too much. That's too much. All right. Anyways, enough of my ranting. Let's go ahead and slip this bad boy in here. Where my wrench right there. So this might make it a half inch shorter or a half inch longer. That's the question right now. Stay tuned to find out. I could just open my phone and look at the tune chart, but, or the whatever chart. But that would require a little bit more work than I want to do right now. It'd save me some time if I can find these stupid holes. I'm talking to myself. I've been working on these bows too long. Not too long, it's been like two hours, three hours. I've been working on bows. Yeah, but not actually. We've been prepping and letting cameras calm down because they over. Gosh dang it. Because they overheated. Okay, that's recording. You gotta like push these cables up just a little bit to get these mods in. There we go. If you don't have them perfect, they don't go in. There's the first one, switched out. Pretty easy, I mean, that's pretty standard switching out, but it's really nice, easy access to those. Flip it around, you gotta do the same thing to both cams. Don't be that guy that just switches the one. Don't be that guy. I've done it before too. It's easy to do, especially if you have like a cable stop of some sort or something and you like switch the mod out, don't move the cable stop. I've done that a lot. That's a simple way to you have? Yep. Can figure out why I wasn't shooting good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I feel like that happens to a lot of people. Like, there's not much you can mess up on a bow. It's like, I guess it could be like way not tuned or, or tuned wrong. But I mean, even then you can shoot good with an untuned bow. So it does the same thing like every time. It's just like, I don't know. I feel like mods are something that always it's like the, the one magical, mystical thing in archery. Mods. All right, slip this bad boy out. Make sure we put the right one in. G, 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 F. Again, you just rotate it in. Make sure you find the right spot. There we go. Now, let's see if we were correct on our on our guess, if F or G is a longer mod, really should be 28 inches or 28 and a half inches. Way over there. Why did that get over there? Right. Okay, that's a longer one. Perfect. Okay. So now peep sight is a little low, I feel. All right, so now, before we do our final tie-ins top bottom, let's go ahead and throw everything on the bow, see how it feels exactly. I'm still gonna keep this long D-loop. I like that D-loop. The shrewd Atlas mount for the back bar. This also comes in the Matthews edition. So if you're getting, if you're like getting, um, shrewd stabilizers and you don't want the standard shrewd one, you have the option of getting the Matthews edition. Like? No, I don't have a Matthews edition. If you did, Where? Uh, oh, I do. Forgot about that. I do. Yes. All right. So spin this around <laughs> on this there is a flat side or a rounded side depending on the configuration of your riser 
use the side that's appropriate. This one's pretty much flat. It's not 100% flat, but it's close. Then I believe, I always forget this, but I think you put, yeah, on the inside. That's what I was thinking. If it fits, sometimes it gets gnarly in there. Then you take your handy dandy bolt. All right. I really should have a different style Allen wrench to do this, but you know what? We're gonna make it work. It's not straight, but there's a little bump right there it's up against. It's, it's where it's supposed to be. Tighten this down. If I can get this out now, there we go. Boom. <laughs> you see it's upside down. Easy fix, ladies and gentlemen. You just have to loosen this. It's because I've switched it around to where it was. Maybe. I really need a, I really need a different type of Allen wrench. Just spin that around like that. How do you set your angle? However it feels right. The angle, the angle really is however you like it. I always just kind of eyeball it and then if it feels good, I just leave it. So like, something like that's probably actually pretty dang good. Slightly angled down. I feel like people overthink these type of things. All a stabilizer really does is counterbalances, or not counterbalances, adds bias to a shot so you have like some resistance to hold against to be steadier. And depending on how much resistance you want is where you put your stabilizer. So let's go ahead, put this front, front bar on. Bada ping, bada boom. It's coming together. Look at that. It's got dirt all over it. Putting on the sight bracket. Nothing too exciting. Make sure they're tight. Then we got the sight. There we go. It's a good looking rig. All right, so now let's uh, double check the peep height. Now that everything's on there, the scope's on there. You always wanna like set up for like the middle of your sight tape of what you shoot. So I have it at 40 yards right now. We'll see how it feels. We can do the scope at 40 yards. I'm actually pretty good. Okay, not bad. So now, left and right is going to be way off, probably. I don't know. I guess let's shoot it through paper and see what, just see what it does. It's probably going to be off a little bit. Probably according to how my 28 is set up. It's probably gonna have to go to the right. Get some fresh paper and shoot through the middle more. Sure, hit hard. It's a heavy arrow still pushing 70, 72 pounds or whatever. So you have a lot of surface. It's an old, uh, it's an old sign rack. My dad got. <laughs> it's not bad. It's low. Yeah, so rest has to go down. 
not bad. That's what I, I was actually thinking this when I put the rest on. It was just like a tad. That's as far as it can go. No way. Why do you want me to have a new D loop so bad? Stupid long. My peep sight is a little high. That was not a little high. Yeah, She's I know. No, it's too low, so don't worry. Oh, may have to retie my D loop a little higher. Oh no. Dang it. You really can't move any lower? No, I can't. But if you have to move it that low, it means like I tied it. Th this one's, this ham ski is way low too. Yeah, this one's like all the way low too. It's just how, it's just how it has to be, I guess. But it's just a little too much, but not a big deal. Yes! We're so pumped about re filming <laughs> it again. <laughs> it's good practice. It's tiring holding this camera. I know. Us filmers, you know, put in real work here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just over here looking all pretty, and I'm just, you know, behind the scenes doing the real work here. Right, right, right. Yep. Getting these cinematic angles. Right, 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 right. Yeah. We're actually going to run a lot of recording time. All right, I just moved it a little bit higher. <laughs> I got confused. <laughs> All right, so let's see now what this does. Perfect. Not bad. Let's take a step back. Just <laughs> stand over there. <laughs> Do not stand right there. Okay, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Little left. So that goes to show. If you see anyone stand like super close to the paper tuner and shoot and they can get a bolt hole and they don't step five yards back, five yards back or like four yards back, it amplifies everything. So we could have looked at that one and been like, yeah, that's a bolt hole. But you take five yards, four yards step back, amplifies a little bit. So we're gonna make some changes on that. Shoot again. Shot in the same hole. <sighs> nice one. A little better. Perfect. Ah, almost. Just a touch, dude. Like, just a touch. But super important, you guys take steps back. Gotta take the steps back. Mm. Too much now. Too much. Alex money. Yeah. That's what you want. So I get to the starting point. Now I'm gonna double check my leveling on my site. I feel like it's off a little bit. Um, and then we'll get my left and right just inside here set up. So I'll go outside and shoot a little bit. 
Actually, it wasn't bad to tune at all. You know what? Good enough for right now. It's inside the lines, it's not perfect. But good enough. All right, now let's do left and right. Now, your left and your right, so you can really just get by doing at a close distance. So I'm going to aim. Yeah, I do. Not bad, just a little left. All right, let's go all set. All right, so I'm going to risk it and just shoot one from 70. <laughs> Should be, I'm guessing this is going to be pretty close. If not, we're going to be looking for an arrow. Money, dude. Where did that actually go? Straight low, edge of the paper. I was aiming for the middle of the big bale. Like what, foot Straight low? low. Foot? Almost level with like 10 ring. Unlike the target. Okay. It's gonna be a hard shot. You're not shooting the deer, are you? I can't. Dude, do you see the flight on that arrow? It was like perfect. <laughs> Dude, I told you that was gonna be a hard shot. Okay, that was that was second, pretty good. Second arrow hard shot at seventy. <laughs> Jeez. All right, that was pretty. This, that was pretty good. This bow just held there. It's touching. <laughs> no way. Yeah, dude. Oh, it's geez. touching down there. <sighs> that one was a little way. On the other side. Three arrows touching, and then one arrow is like three inches well right. Yeah, this bow's a shooter. <laughs> You're gonna be disgusted. <laughs> Keep it rolling the oh, entire I am, time. I am. Don't worry. This is not fake. We literally. This is the first. This is the first end shooting I shot one arrow at the middle of the giant bale guessed it it was about a foot and a half low moved my sight oh geez every single arrow I is can a hard see shot. him already come on <laughs> that took that bow build took like an hour and a half while filming if I was just doing it without filming it would have been a lot quicker Dude, just disgusting. What'd I tell you? I said four arrows touching and one arrow about three inches low right. <laughs> I think that, okay, that, that was a pretty good setup. And <laughs> I'd say that was a successful bow build. I'm not even, I'm, oh dude, that's so awesome. I don't know. Dude, I mean, like, I'll say this, but, like, I don't know if I had a bow build go that smooth. 
like in the history of me building a bow. And for me to walk out and shoot. Shoot, this is, this is my first one. I was aiming right here, so I did that low. I added five yards and just shot that group. Like legit. You gonna throw a hand on here? Oh yeah, one second. This arrow was in that target for like a week. And Stuck I just had Bryce help me take it out. <laughs> Super pumped about that. Like, never had to happen. Extra. Extra. Extra, extra. Dude, so I haven't shot a Robin Hood in a long time. I shot a Robin Hood. <laughs> oh. Gosh. Second group. Tight group. Yeah, this is the second group at 70 yards. We were just shooting some B-roll. Just shooting B-roll. That was during the B-roll segment you just saw. So, anyways, if you don't believe me, this bow's a shooter, you know, I really don't have to say much more. <laughs>